Welcome back to Practical Pediatrics for Parents. This video is part one of a three-part series on sleep. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to get your infant between birth and one year old to be a better sleeper. In part two, I'll talk about sleep in kids between one and 12 years old. And part three will be about sleep in teenagers. If these videos help keep you and your family healthy, please hit like and subscribe. So you come home from the hospital with your newborn baby and you find that they have their days and nights mixed up. This is because in the last trimester of pregnancy, while the mother was up and walking around during the day, the baby was in the womb getting rocked to sleep. And then when the mother was trying to sleep at night, the baby was awake and kicking all night. This pattern of sleeping during the day and being up at night carries over after they're born. And it takes about two weeks for it to flip back where they're sleeping more at night and up during the day. Parents have tried to flip their baby head over heels to see if this reverses their clock. But as you might imagine, this doesn't work. What does work is having a schedule where during the day you expose your baby to light, noise, and activity. And at night, you provide an environment that is darker, quiet, and more calm. Newborns sleep between 14 and 17 hours per day, spread throughout the day or night. In the first few months of life, newborns require a lot of calories to grow, and they need to feed every few hours during the day and the night in order to grow optimally. It's not until around four months of age they're able to get enough calories during the day that they can sleep longer stretches at night. All people, including babies, sleep cycling from light sleep to deep sleep, going through several cycles throughout the night. When adults enter light sleep, we'll often flip over, pull up our covers, adjust our pillow, and we'll go back to sleep, often not even remembering that we did this during the night. Your baby will follow a similar cycle of light and deep sleep, and whatever conditions were there when they first went down to sleep need to be present when they enter light sleep during the night so they can go back to sleep. If you held them or rocked them until they fell asleep at bedtime, they're gonna need to be held or rocked to go back to sleep during the night. If a baby falls asleep in the parent's bed and then gets moved into their crib after they fell asleep, they're gonna to wanna to be back in the parent's bed to fall asleep during the night. If they fell asleep with music or a TV on at bedtime, then they'll need music or the TV on all night long so that they can transition to deep sleep when they go into light sleep during the night. Having a good sleep environment and teaching your baby to fall asleep on their own, called sleep self-initiation, are the keys to having a baby that goes back to sleep on their own when they wake during the night and that does not need to be held, rocked, or comforted every few hours all night long. To help your baby be a good sleeper, focus on having a safe, healthy sleep environment and establishing a good bedtime routine. To protect your child from sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS, always put your baby to sleep on their back in a crib, bassinet, or portable playpen with a firm, flat mattress and a fitted sheet without pillows, crib bumpers, or toys. Provide a smoke-free environment and give them a pacifier if they'll take one. Optimal sleep environment includes a dark room with no overhead lights on. A low dim light, such as a nightlight, is okay, but infants are not scared of the dark, so they don't actually need a nightlight. You should also keep the noise level down as much as possible after you put your baby to sleep. If you live in a city or a noisy street and noises wake up your child, consider using a white noise machine or a white noise app. Babies sleep better in a room that is slightly cool, keeping the room temperature around 68 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 19 to 21 degrees centigrade, will improve your baby's sleep. It's never too early to start a bedtime routine. Even in the first few months of life, when your baby needs to feed during the night, you can start getting them used to a routine. At around the same time every evening, do the same four or five things in the same order, such as feeding, washing or bathing, applying moisturizing lotion, singing a song, or reading them a book. After the nightly routine, place your baby awake, face up in their crib, and turn off the light. Some babies will fall asleep while feeding, but ideally you should separate feeding from falling asleep. If your baby falls asleep while being fed, rouse them a bit by changing their diaper or washing them before moving on to the rest of the routine. 
Just having a consistent bedtime routine has been shown to help many babies be better sleepers. There are two methods recommended by sleep experts to get your baby to sleep through the night, extinction and graduated extinction. Before you try either one of these methods, you should make sure that you have a good sleep environment, that you have established a good consistent bedtime routine, that your baby's at least four months old, and that your baby is gaining weight well. In the extinction or cried out method, after the bedtime routine, you put your baby down face up in their crib and you let them cry until they fall asleep. This can be difficult for many parents as some babies will cry for a long time. The method that I recommend for parents who have a good bedtime routine and a good sleep environment, but their baby is still not a good sleeper, is called graduated extinction, also known as the fervor method. It's based on the fact that babies that learn to soothe themselves to sleep are likely to go back to sleep when they wake during the night and not wake up their parents. Basically, you put your baby down, face up, awake in their crib, and you let them cry for increasingly longer periods until they fall asleep. Here's how it works. Every evening at around the same time, you go through your bedtime routine and then you place your baby awake face up in their crib and you walk away. If they start crying, set a timer and wait for say five minutes to see if they settle down. If after five minutes they're still crying, check on them, soothe them while they lay in their crib by talking to them and gently rubbing them, but try not to pick them up. Once they've settled down, leave the room and let them cry again. This time, let them cry a little bit longer, say for 10 minutes. Each time that you go in and calm your child, you let them cry for a longer period until eventually they fall asleep. It can be very hard to hear your baby cry, and some parents worry that they might be causing psychological trauma. But in fact, a 2020 study showed that babies who became better sleepers using the graduated extinction method showed increased security and attachment after the program. If you tried these methods and your baby's still not sleeping through the night by the time that they're six months old, talk to your pediatrician. That's what we're here for.